hey guys, it's Greg. In this video, I would like to show you Tsukuyomi. So the game is on the market for a couple of years already, but uh, the game is going to be on crowdfunding platform soon with this new version. So I think it's a good occasion to remind you of Tsukuyomi and how this game works and flows. But this new edition of Tsukuyomi is basically exactly the same as the previous one. The upgrades um, are uh, seen in the rulebook or in uh, uh, player aids and so on but in general rules of the game and the game flow is exactly the same as the game that is on the market already so if you already have Tsukuyumi you can get for example upgraded and uh, this upgrade pack with uh, with new rulebook and uh, new player aids but the game is uh, is exactly the same there are also other minor changes like for example uh, the authors are going to split uh, the components into different boxes so something different is going to be available in um, in, uh, in the core box and something different is going to be available in expansion uh, so those are just like tiny tiny uh, changes but nothing uh, major that is going to influence the game so if you are uh, interested in Tsukuyomi or you never played Tsukuyomi just check out the rest of this video so the game is set on a table now I would like to tell you more about the components that you have uh, and you can see here, so first of all we have four factions in the base game, uh, excluding these guys, this big, um, almost dark figures. Though This is a, a, a new faction, Dark Crusade, that is going to be added uh, in upcoming um, campaign. Uh, so we have four factions, and now uh, what uh, uh, else we have here? Regular locations like these around, this is actually the setup of one of the scenarios that are in a, uh, in a, a rulebook. Uh, those are the regular uh, locations where you can uh, walk around and try to control them. And then here we have the moon, so the moon is like a special type of location, as those locations are controlled by Oni, where those are the symbols that shows that um, those locations are not, not controlled by Oni, but let's say there is a presence of Oni. And thanks to this, you, um, each player is going to spawn those purple guys. Those are like NPCs and the, what is cool that every player can control them. And we have different types of uh, those Onis uh, with different skills, with, uh, not skills, with different uh, statistics. And uh, as I said, each of the players can control them. Each of the players can can use them to uh, mess with your uh, competitors. So this is very cool uh, element. Onis can spawn in here, but but also new locations can be um, like added or controlled by um, Onis. So thanks to this, uh, in the NPCs can spawn in a different locations on the map. So you not only have to remember and uh, see what your com um, com what your opponents are doing on the map and what kind of um, sectors they are trying to control, you also need to remember that some onions can be activated by other players to mess with your strategy. Um, right, with each faction, uh, you are going to get this core uh, like base, let's say. Uh, at least with the, each faction in, in the core game, as and then additional factions can be quite completely different, uh, as the, all of them are, are asymmetrical. And so this is the biggest value of the game, as playing each of the faction is completely different thing. Uh, so we have bases, at least in this um, base game. Obviously miniatures. Uh, there is also a version with uh, standees and some tokens, those, repres those tokens represent that those sectors are, those locations are controlled by a uh, red player. Um, and basically this is it. Obviously some additional tokens can be added, like for example, radioactivity or, or uh, uh, as table. So those, uh, those special um, effects are going to influence specific uh, tile. Like for example, in here we have a radioactivity and this is something um, unique for yellow um, faction because all units on those areas will be destroyed at the end of the round except uh, yellow faction as those are insects and as we can all guess insects are going to survive even radioactive fallout so 
those are the components and um, elements of the main game, main board. And now, what is the goal of the game and how long the game can be played? So, and over here we have this um, this tile, and on this tile you are going to put the tokens of the initiative of each of the factions, and also in here you have a tracker of how many rounds. Um, past so maximum is five, but you can adjust the length of the of the game as you wish. Uh, I mean, you, you can even I don't know, I don't think it's a good idea to play it for one round, but four or five, it's up to you. You can decide how long the game is going to be. And now, how the game flows and how it works. So first of all, the the rules of the of this game are really simple because um, those cards of action, those action cards. This is the core of the game and uh, everything is based on those cards. So at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get, um, uh, I think, six of them and they are completely different. Each of them is completely different. So you're going to get six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now at the beginning of the round, you are going to choose one of those cards that you want to activate for yourself. Uh, the first the front of the card, this white section, is uh, exactly the same on each of the cards, and the difference is on the back of those cards. So you are going to choose one of those cards. This, this card is going to be activated in your turn, and the rest of the cards you're going to be, uh, you're going to pass to other player on the left or on the right. Mm, and now th this is the mm, the thing, because. Um, if you think you're going to plan a lot of this game, uh, it, well, uh, it's not going to happen because uh, as you're going to pass those cards to the other player, uh, another player is going to give you uh, their uh, their cards that they didn't uh, didn't choose in, uh, the, uh, in the turn. So uh, you always have to adapt to the situation and you always have to like, play with the things that you got. Uh, you are not going to freely uh, uh, perform actions uh, whatever action we would like to uh, perform. You always need to adapt. But it, it sounds uh, cruel, but in the end, as you can see, uh, those actions are going to repeat themselves. So uh, there is a possibility that you're going to find the card that is more or less what you are looking for uh, in your upcoming turn. So after you chose one of those cards, you are going to activate each of those fields in an initiative order, uh, starting with the white white side. So here we have this uh, number one, and the player with the lowest initiative, or uh, after changing the initiative, because it is also always also possible. Uh, in the end, the player that is on the first spot is going to activate um, their. Uh, white side of the card, choose two different actions and perform those actions. After this player performs this action, another player in an initiative order is going to uh, do the, exactly the same. After each of the players activated white side, you're going to go with blue, green and red in this order. So you cannot perform red actions before uh, blue action. Now, firstly, you need to firm, um, fulfill all players need to fulfill their blue action, then green action, and then uh, red action. And this is it. Those are the all uh, rules, basically, of this game. Especially that those actions are really simple and quite intuitive. So, for example, in here, uh, use your faction um, effect on each of the cards or uh, faction boards. You have the symbol. And in here, you have information what kind of effect is going to be activated. And those uh, informations on the cards are uh, sufficient. You are not going to uh, browse through the rulebook uh, constantly, uh, turning pages and searching what uh, what uh, you should do right now, because everything is quite intuitive in this game and the flow is really fast. Then, for example, produce units upgrades uh, to a value of two. So uh, that means uh, why two, because there's a number two in here. So you're checking your player, uh, again, your uh, faction board in here, you have some information how much resources, let's say points you're going to spend to, uh, to spawn one of these. And you're going to put your miniatures on uh, on a board, and basically this is it. Uh, place two onis, exactly the same thing. You can put two onis um, on the board, on the locations with the symbol or locations adjacent to the symbol. You are going to choose whatever kinds of onis on you wish to spawn. Uh, they are different. There are also special onis with uh, more powerful skills. In the base game, we only have those like three basic uh, onis. 
Uh, what else we have here? Choose one only from one, uh, choose only from one area, move them up to one area, and execute attack. And this is it, just you're moving them by one and you're performing an attack. Move each of your units up to two areas, execute up to three combat actions. And you know, like, like I said, this is it. Those are the actions. We also have, uh, for example, events, draw two event cards and play up to two event cards. So those events can mess with the board. You're go you, there's a possibility to add more tiles. You can transform some tile into radioactive and so on and so on. So this is very, uh, very simple. Now, uh, how you are going to win this game? Well, uh, so those are the goals that you want to achieve. So first of all, you're going to get one victory point if you are controlling the moon center at the end of the round. Um, and this is instant victory point, so you can get them uh, in each round. Uh, so if you are controlling center of the moon, you can get one victory point. And uh, basically you are going to fight with uh, your uh, components too control this and uh, the center of the board second one missions once a player fulfill uh, the condition of a mission they immediately receive one victory point and this is another thing because each faction comes with the, their own specific mission card so for example let me show you a mission card of the swarm so the uh, insects control seven areas if you control seven areas you're going to get one victory point and what is uh, also surprising in this game this mission card belongs to the yellow faction but each player can fulfill this uh, fulfill this goal it's not only for it's not only for um, the yellow faction player another uh, another point the uh, faction specific goals so each of the uh, factions each of the faction comes with their own unique goal if you fulfill it you are going to get another two uh, victory points Another one, uh, destroying uh, Fireborn, so if you're playing with special, special um, with expansion, uh, if you destroy Fireborn, you need instantly end one victory point, and other sources, some factions allow you to gain victory points in other ways. Um, again, as I said, this game is very asymmetrical, so it's up to the faction how you can get extra victory points. And uh, there's also a possibility to get victory points at the end of the game. A controlled area, each area controlled by a player is worth one victory point. So basically here, those uh, triangles shows you how many victory points you're going to get. Uh, controlled uh, fertile ground, so those green locations, if you control them, you're going to get two points, not one. And initiative placement, the player who takes the first place on the initiative track that gets two victory points and the player who is second gets one victory point. And those are the all point, the victory points that you can get. So the game is basically about controlling map, uh, about um, f destroying Fireborn if you're playing with expansion and fulfilling the goals on those mission cards. Now, at the end, I would like to tell you how the battles are managed in this game. So each player starts with their own a set, a set of battle cards. Again, the, those cards are also um, asymmetrical. And in here, depending on what kind of action you want to perform, a different card you want to, you are going to play. So for example, uh, we have Conquest. So those, this card is going to be used by a player who wants to control, um, take control over the tile. So uh, if you, I am playing as a green, um, green um, faction, I am going to execute this top of the card. So Conquest can only be played if you have at least as many conquest points as each one of your opponents. Mark the area with one of the territory markers, take strongholds into account. So that, what does it mean? We need to check, uh, the, again, the player board and our uh, um, units, each of those units uh, uses three different stats. We, those stats are over here. This triangle on the, over here, th this is this, the stat that was mentioned in, on the card. So this is the stat of uh, conquest points. So uh, you're going to add all of the, all, all of the triangles uh, of each of the units that is on a specific tile. And you need to compare this result with the units of your, uh, with the stats of your opponents. If you are alone on a tile, uh, it's obviously that you are, uh, the, the number that you're comparing is zero. And if you have higher, uh, higher number, you're going to put your triangle on the board on this, on this specific tile and you're going to control it. But after that, the opponent that was on a, is on a, this, on this uh, hex, can choose one of those uh, um, one of those 
uh, responses, let's say, one of these responses. And this is very unique when it comes to this, let's say, area control game, because, re- uh, for example, if that will, if that happened over here, so I, me as a green player, I am trying to take control over this tile. The blue player is going to use um, uh, reactions from my green card. Blue player is not going to use their own own uh, combat cards with their own actions. This is how you are going to react for action of the uh, of the uh, of the green player conquest action of the green player. Also, we have annihilate. So this is just uh, uh, basically attacking. And again, this time you are going to check your stat of this black black heart that is upside down you're going to again count the number uh, make a sum and after that you are going to uh, check how many damages let's say you're going to uh, you are going to inflict and the, your opponent needs to spend those points on health of each of the uh, of uh, each of the units that was on this um, hex, so this is it's very it's, it's, it is it is possible for you to um, hide your weaker weaker units uh, behind the more powerful one. So, for example, what I want to say is, if on this um, hex we had a boar master with thirty. Uh, health points, let's say, and this small uh, squeaker with 10 uh, um, health points. If I, for example, inf- inflicted only 25 damage, I can, uh, the green player can decide that those all those 25 damage is going to be um, uh, assigned to this boar master, and 25 is not enough to kill the boar master, so nothing happens. And we also have some uh, specific uh, cards uh, in here. We have like a mix of uh, conquest and annihilation, and in here we have uh, again some uh, annihilation. As I said, those cards are totally unique for each of the factions and um, tra- can drastically uh, differ. So this is the core game. Uh, as I said, in here we also have this uh, extra uh, extra faction. Those are dark crusades so this is something new and in here you have information how difficult is this faction from one to three this is the scale and in here we have ro- uh, uh, um, units rules and on the back side uh, as always uh, or some information about asymmetrical uh, effects of your uh, faction and skills of your um, units uh, ob- obviously we have also those symbols like in here those red um, borders or something like this those are like obstacles that are um, impossible to pass for some units uh, but for example flying units flying units could uh, can pass those obstacles so uh, those different um, elements are going to uh, change how the game is going to be uh, played so um, this is the uh, Tsukuyomi in this version that is available was available on the market until now. Uh, and as I, as I said at the beginning, the game is going to be on a crowdfunding platform soon uh, with this, let's say, new version. So the new version of the game uh, is going to have minor changes, but those changes are basically only all in the rulebook or, uh, for example, on those uh, on those cards with information about uh, units of your opponents, because right now we have like a lot of those cards and they just want to uh, simplify it and merge those units so you, so each player can have just one one card and not so many of them. So like they're adding a lot of qu- quality of life improvements, but the core rules are going to be exactly the same. So if you have the, uh, the Tsukuyomi, this new version is going to be uh, nothing new. I mean, you obviously you can get the upgrade expansion with your rulebook and with those uh, upgrades, those small, those components that make the game easier to play and flow. But uh, we are not going to have uh, new rules and new mechanics uh, whatsoever. So this is Tsukuyomi. Uh, if you like this game, uh, check out the description uh, below. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.